Unless you're living under a wrestling rock. And maybe that's a cool place to be. I don't know. We all know that Daniel Bryan has finally been given clearance by WWE's doctors to return in the ring. And it was to great fanfare and great ovulation and great ejaculation that many of you celebrated this news. Why not? Something you weren't sure was going to happen, something you didn't know was going to happen, something that so many of you have waited so long for, finally is happening. The dream is a reality. Congratulations. Now let me be the rain cloud on your sunny day and give you 10 truths about Daniel Bryan's WWE in-ring return. Number one, whether anyone wants to agree with it or not, whether anyone wants to like it or not, and I'm sure you'll be flaming away with your keyboard fingers of fire in the comments section, debating and discussing and arguing this. The simple truth is, Daniel Bryan was easily the most unanimously over babyface that I had seen in quite some time. Like, CM Punk had a sizable following. He had a majority of wrestling fans behind him. But the Daniel Bryan stuff was on a whole different level, on an entirely different plane. It's not even close. Compared to Daniel Bryan, CM Punk can suck a cock. Like, Daniel Bryan hit people in an entirely different way, in an entirely different place. And it doesn't matter whether anybody's excited about it or not. A lot of people are, and some are being counterculture, and they're not. The fact is, it cannot possibly be a bad thing from a business and product standpoint to have your most unanimously over babyface in years back in the fold as an in-ring competitor. Regardless of if you want to admit it or not, it does not matter. The fact remains that Daniel Bryan was a draw when he was at the height of his power. There is no questioning this. Like you look at the road to WrestleMania and the ratings with Daniel Bryan and Triple H. They were bumping up a little bit compared to other roads to WrestleMania. The dude was filling arenas. The dude was selling a ton of merch. He wasn't a Hogan, Austin, Rock level draw. Absolutely not. But he was a draw. And frankly, the WWE lacks guys that are draws on their own. And at least you could say with Daniel Bryan, this company now puts back into the fold somebody who actually could legitimately draw something on his own. Third truth, and this is a really important question that I've got. What the hell is so different now compared to a month ago, three months ago, six months ago, 12 months ago? Did the lesions on the brain just magically dissipate? Did the possible after effects of 20 something odd damn concussions for Daniel Bryan just magically go poof and not exist anymore because he's the Breakfast Club killer? Yes, yes, yes. Bullshit. Like what the hell is so different now for WWE that they can magically clear him? When you could talk about the hyperbaric chambers and you could talk about other, other bullshit, but the simple fact of the matter is it doesn't have much of a bearing on all the previous damage that's been done. What is so fundamentally different now for WWE that they finally go and say, Oh, we're going to let you wrestle in the ring again. A lot of you believe that Vince McMahon held Daniel Bryan back for so long, refused to have him be medically cleared by the WWE doctors because he was afraid that Daniel Bryan and Daniel Bryan fans would make Roman Reigns look really bad. And frankly, there is something to that. Because you're trying to make Roman Reigns the golden child. It's not going to do any good, especially if you have Daniel Bryan on the same damn show, because that crap's really not going to fly. And if people are still thinking about Daniel Bryan as an active in-ring competitor, they're going to revolt to the highest degree at the thought of Roman Reigns being that dude. And also, when you think about it from Vince McMahon's standpoint, he remembers how 2014 and 2015 went down. He's seen this play before. He's seen it play out. And it wasn't a good thing. So yeah, it might not have been the only reason, but it was a reason, I firmly believe that, that Vince McMahon held Daniel Bryan out for so damn long because he was afraid that Daniel Bryan and him being back was going to overpower the product. And frankly, he was right to think so.
There's a big part of me that firmly believes that a major reason Vince is finally giving the okay for Daniel Bryan to return to the ring as a WWE performer is that they had booked themselves into a corner with the whole Shane McMahon, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn crap that they had no other choice. His son needed a tag team partner at WrestleMania, most specifically so that way Shane could actually finally win at WrestleMania. Don't you think that that could be a small bit of this, a at least somewhat part of this, is that the only reason Daniel Bryan finally got the sign off now is a few weeks out from Mania 34, he realizes Shane needs a tag team partner and he wants to get his son a win at WrestleMania. I'm just saying. Another truth about this, to me at least, is that Vince is doing this to troll the Indies and specifically New Japan. You've got the Strong Style Evolve show that's coming up. You've got all these different companies that try to latch on and leech off of WrestleMania weekend in New Orleans by running their own shows there. That's exactly what they're doing, and they're smart to do so, but let's call it as it is. That's exactly what they're doing. You got all them wrestling fans in one place. You got to pick them off as they're looking for things to fill time until Mania Sunday night. And you see Vince worrying about the two sweet shit. To me, that's exactly a big part of this is, oh, New Japan is doing this, New Japan is doing that. Let's remind them all that WWE still has Daniel Bryan and they can all kiss Vince's dick. I firmly believe another part of this is that Vince McMahon is trying to tease Daniel Bryan. He's trying to, frankly, troll Daniel Bryan a little bit by conning him into thinking that he really views him as this big, huge star, and that he's okay with Daniel Bryan being back in a WWE ring as an active competitor. And there's no reason to go work on the independent scene. There's no reason to sit there and go to New Japan, because look at what all you've got at Vince's house, baby. Like, there's a big part of me that feels like Vince is doing this just long enough to con Daniel Bryan into thinking that he'll be okay long-term working for WWE, so he will re-up his contract, and then Vince will try to drop him like a bad habit. Would you really put that past Vince McMahon? Here's an inconvenient truth for a lot of Daniel Bryan fans, even though some of them may try to put on a public face, a front, as the cool kids say, and say, we know that this could be part-time here and there. No, a lot of y'all believe that this is automatically green flag shit. He's back full-time. Just because Daniel Bryan got medically cleared doesn't guarantee that he is going to wrestle full-time. So we need to back up and pump the brakes a little bit. And the crap that a lot of you over the years have used to me when I try to first guess angles and storylines and character turns and stuff, I will now redirect to you. Let's wait and see how this thing plays out. Don't be too hasty. One match at Mania in no way, shape, or form guarantees that he will be back full time or even wrestle another match, frankly another inconvenient truth for the hardcore Daniel Bryan fans. Just because he was this in the past is no guarantee that he's going to come back and immediately be the same as he was before or ever be the same as he was before. You can look to Shawn Michaels being gone for four and a half years with the back injury and stuff and coming back and being the old Shawn Michaels and say that automatically applies to Daniel Bryan. There's no guarantee of that. You don't know that. I understand where you think, well, he was so great, it's like riding a bike. Once you learn how, you never forget. But it's not that simple. And initially, Daniel Bryan could come back and kind of go with the high spot type of stuff. You know, not actually the full body of work in a match because he might not be able to piece it together. He might not be able to work it at the same level as he did before. So he might have to settle for some of the high spot stuff to try and trick people into thinking that he's more back than he actually is. Don't automatically assume or set your expectations to that the American Dragon, Brian Danielson, Daniel Bryan, will come back and from day number one, moment number one, will be like he always has been before because the truth is he very well might not. Don't set yourself up for disappointment. 
Finally, and this is the biggest, most inconvenient, but necessary of truths of all for all of you Daniel Bryan lovers out there. Please, for the love of God, just because your hero is back, don't go burning down the freaking internet and trying to crash everything down when your boy isn't WWE champ or Universal champ in three months, six months, or a year. And don't sit there and tell me you won't. 2014, 2015, I rest my freaking case. Let this play out. Just be happy and excited for the moment that you've even got Daniel Bryan back in a WWE ring once again because a year, year and a half ago, you thought that this possibility might never happen. And frankly, from a business standpoint, while sure you could talk about the great underdog story, he has now added a new chapter, and it would be nice to culminate that with a world title win at some point in time down the road. I do not fundamentally disagree with that, but I most certainly am not going to launch specifically in it because the last two times I was the WWE sat there and put a big title on Daniel Bryan and had plans for Daniel Bryan, how'd that work out? And if you are a responsible business person, Yet you sit there and put a lot of hopes into Daniel Bryan's return. You're fucking crazy and you deserve the negative of whatever bad happens. So if Vince, Triple H, whoever you want to blame, doesn't immediately insert Daniel Bryan into the WWE or WWE Universal Championship pictures, don't get mad. Don't get butthurt. Don't sit there and talk about cancel WWE Network. Don't sit there and rage and flame on and light up Reddit, the squared circle crap. Light up the dirt sheets. Light up social media. Because if you were in their position, you wouldn't put them in that spot that soon e either. And if you did, you'd be fucking stupid. Just be patient. And if he's proven that he's back and he's really back, and then the WWE still holds them back. At that point in time, much later down the road, you can have that conversation and you have some solid arguments to bring to the table. But I'm already seeing people talking about they want to see him against this guy. They want to see him against that guy. How about we see him make it through one match and make it through that safe and sound? Don't get crazy here. Don't get carried away here. Yeah, coming for me. Don't get carried away here. Just... R-E-L-A-X, relax. And whatever happens, happens. Just be happy that your hero is back. Daniel Bryan haters, Daniel Bryan lovers. You can hate me if you want, but these were some hard truths that I felt like needed to be put out there. Because remember, I'm the Slug Daddy, and this is OTRS Central, and as the shirt says, not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. And you needed this, whether you wanted it or not.